name is Dr. Craig Woodson, and today I'd like to show you how you can make your own xylophone. This video is brought to you by the Percussion Marketing Council, PMC, and the NAM Foundation. I do programs for PMC called Drum Set in the Classroom. Now you'll find a lesson plan at playdrums.com, fun with drums. So look that up to help uh, with the project. Uh, the word xylophone has two parts, xylo and phone. Xylo means wood and phone means sound. So this is a wood sounding instrument. The materials you'll need will be either a yardstick or uh, some paint paddles. And these are large paint paddles, they're thick. And uh, you see types that have the markers on them for measuring and some that are blank. We want the ones that have the uh, measurements on them. Now, the important thing to know is a lot of the different materials you can get in your local store. This is uh, uh, different colors of masking tape that's available. You'll need uh, two dowels, 3 8 inch dowels, or two brand new pencils unsharpened. You'll also need a pair of scissors. You'll need some sandpaper. I like to use colored markers here, uh, permanent markers decoration and a pencil. You'll need also a brick, some solid block to uh, use for cutting the wood. And you'll also need a washcloth and a Kleenex box. Now it's also important to learn about hacksaws. These are the saws we'll use. This is called a hacksaw. It's got a hacksaw blade here. This is a, I call a craft saw, small blade. And then this is the hacksaw blade with just a simple handle, quite easy and convenient to use. So the first step is to determine which one you're going to use. If you use the uh, yardstick, you'll get slightly longer uh, bars, uh, 7.5, 8.5, 9.5, and 10.5. Uh, if you use the paint paddles, uh, you'll get 7, 8, 9, and 10 inch lengths. So I think I'm going to go with the the uh, paint paddle, uh, and I marked these with the uh, correct uh, dimensions. This happens to be an eight and a nine inch length. And uh, what you'll do is mark, if you want to mark it with pencil on here, which I have done. So you're going to take your, to cut this, you're going to take your, your, your cloth and put the brick down on it. I like to use a, a solid surface, not on a tablecloth. Um, if you're doing it on a table, you can do it on workbench if you like, it's fine. Um, but uh, well, let's see, let's use this uh, saw blade here. And what I'm going to do is I'll put my finger here as a guide and I'll get the saw blades on the line, but I'm going to take my finger away and I'll pull back one time, just like this, and pull back one more time, as you see. So that gets a little groove started. And now I'll start sawing back and forth. And you see it wants to move around. If you need help, Holding it, that's fine, get someone to help you. And as I go back and forth, it's starting to cut, but I'm gonna flatten the saw blade out just a little bit to make a groove so that I can follow that groove right across the stick. So now it's made a bit of a guide. Now I'll go back up to my regular angle sawing position and I'll go ahead and saw through, but I'm gonna stop just a little bit before the, the end of the cut right about there. Now I'm going to turn it over, turn the, the uh, paint paddle over, and I'll, I'll make a little bit of a groove right here, just a little bit of a groove with my finger, and then get my finger out of the way. Now I'm going to put the saw blade in, and I'll cut the rest of the, the paint paddle going the opposite direction, and that'll keep it from getting a sharp point coming out the end. It keeps a nice, clean cut across that. So that's the way you're going to cut each of the uh, paint paddles or the yardstick. Okay, the next step will be to sand the bars. So we'll take two of them and wrap some sandpaper around one of them to make a sanding block. So we'll take that and lightly sand the edges, the corners around each end of each bar. So you'll do this for all of the bars. Now, something that's very important to understand is what's called bar vibration. 
And that simply means that bars move. Vibration means movement. So if you take uh, a bar and hit it, it'll try to vibrate in the middle and at the ends the most. If you hit it uh, on these dots where I wrote uh, a circle here, they will not vibrate as easily. And you can demonstrate that simply by holding the bar like this, no sound, but if I hold it on the node, you get the sound. So the vibration is actually happening in the middle, on the ends, but not where those dots are. Now it's important to also know that the dot should be placed on this longest bar about an inch and a half in from each end. Uh, as you get to the smaller bars, they can go uh, a little bit less than an uh, inch and a half in. Now we'll place them down on the table, long to short, and we'll put them about three quarters of an inch apart. Okay, three quarters of an inch apart. And what I would like to do now is join them together with some tape. So we'll do this here the following way. We're going to start here on the table and we're going to put the tape on the table first and then go right over the dots. And the, the bars are three quarters of an inch apart. I've already uh, measured these. I can see it right on the table and stick it to the other side. Now to make sure they're very firmly uh, attached to the bars, I'm going to take my marker, either end, doesn't matter, and I'm going to rub onto the tape each bar, and the, the tape goes right over the bars. It doesn't stick to the table except for at each end. All right, so now we'll peel up. You can see I'm peeling up the tape here, peeling up the tape off the table. So now I'll grab each bar, pull it and turn it over, pull it up, over, and down. So I'm going to turn the tape all the way over so the sticky side is now facing up. All right. Now I'm going to make a handle. It's a little bit easier. It's one way you uh, play this xylophone in some different areas around the world. So uh, you hold it up and, and, and play it uh, vertically. So I'm going to make a handle the following way. I'm going to take some tape uh, and I'll stick it to the table about two inches onto the table. Now I'm going to pull the tape uh, out and then pinch it and make a handle. And I happen to know how long it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a little longer than the longest bar. Okay, and I'll do the other end the same way. So now I'm going to stick it to the, the surface facing up. All right, now we've got one end done. So now I'll measure the other end with tape a little bit longer than the shortest key. Stick it to the table, pinch it, pull it up, give me two inches at the end, and now you have two inches, two inches, and stuck in the middle stuck together. So we'll put the tape on, the tape facing up, our green tape. So actually I could pick the whole thing up and there we are. But we have one more piece of tape to go on. We got to finish this up to make sure it's all stuck together. So we've used red and green. Let's see, let's go to orange. Um, so now what I'm going to do is very, very important because now the tape uh, is going to hold the whole xylophone together, this uh, last piece, the third piece. So we're going to put the tape now right on the joint between uh, the handle and that first piece of green tape that we did. And we're going to come up to the side of the bar. We're going to stick it to the side of the bar, over the top, down the side, on the bottom, over the side, over the top, down the side, and all the way this way, all the way to the other end. All right. Here we go. Now we'll do the other side. Stick it to the joint between those two, the handle and the sticky tape facing up. And now I'm going to the side, the top, the side, the bottom. You want to stick it to all surfaces. If you don't, 
the keys can come loose. All right, there we go. Ta -da. And so now it's all stuck together and it will not come apart. So there's your xylophone. You can play it. Pretty nice sound. So you might want to do this. You might want to add a piece of tape uh, to the end to make a bit of a softer beater. And we'll just wrap some tape around this way just to add a little bit of uh, mallet in the end. Traditional instruments sometimes have a little, a little beater on the end. It's a softer sound. versus the wood. Right, so now you can decorate it, certainly decorate it. You can decorate it with uh, markers and so forth. That's a lot of fun. You can also do this. You can put it on your lap. Let's see, just do it like this. Put it on my lap, you can do this. So that works. It, the lap gives it a little bit of a resonator sound. But to make a, a louder sound even, you can use your, your Kleenex box. So I'll take a Kleenex box here, and what I'll do is, is make a mark all the way around like this, all the way around, and, uh, and then cut out, the op uh, cut out the opening with some scissors, pull the, the Kleenex out, and then make our xylophone. So here is what I've already done. I've already made the marks. Here are the marks right here. And I've started my cut with the scissors. And now I'm going around like this. So there's our cut. We'll take out the top. Take out the Kleenex for later. Put it in the box somewhere. Now we can put our xylophone on for a box resonator. You can see that it's a whole lot louder with the box resonator. And here's with the box. Now we also might want to do this, take the cloth and put it down, put the box on it, and that'll keep it even a little cleaner sound so the box doesn't hit the table. You can hit on the end. Now, the real xylophone, for example, from Thailand, is this one called the Rana Ek. This is a small toy version. And uh, the one that you would find more in the European tradition is um, this one. And it has bigger mallets. All right, so now you have it. How to make your own xylophone. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember, go to playdrums.com forward slash fun with drums and you'll see the lesson plan that accompanies this video. Uh, look at my other videos. I have one that's on making your own can drum and another one that's on making uh, shakers and cowbells. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. I hope to see you again. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.